In this video, we will discuss creating and editing feature lines. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1102 creating and editing feature lines.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. So in this example, let's go ahead and create a tourist parking lot. Before we do so, let's look a little more in detail about feature lines. So again, as we mentioned in the grading overview video, feature lines interact with each other. Let's create two feature lines to see what I mean by this. So to create feature lines, they are located in the create design panel of the home tab. And you have all the different options to create feature lines from the dropdown. You can create a feature line from scratch, feature line from just regular AutoCAD objects. You can create one from the alignment, a line from corridor and stepped offset. For now, we'll just go ahead and create a feature line. Notice how it needs to go into site as we discussed in the grading overview video. You can even give them a name if you want to, but for now, we'll just leave this off. You give it a style so it looks a certain way and then the layer that it must go on. We'll click OK and I'm going to put this feature line at elevation 100. So let's go ahead and just place this anywhere in space and notice how I have the option to specify elevation or drape this point to a surface, which is really cool. So we'll just type in 100, enter, and now that point is at 100. You can now specify a next point or draw an arc if you want to. So we'll just go ahead and just draw another line here and we'll put this one also at 100, but notice the options available. I can set the grade between these two points, the slope between these two points, an elevation difference, again, snap that point to the surface, and a transition as well. So I can say go from one elevation to another elevation. And you'll transition that line to that elevation. So we'll just type in 100 and go with that. Now I'm going to draw a simple rectangle. And we'll put this right across our feature line so we can view this functionality. Now, if you look at my 3D view, this feature line is at 100. This rectangle is at 0. Let's see what happens when I make this now a feature line. I'll go to the feature line and create feature lines from objects. Select my object. Notice how I have a few other options available. First, I'll give this one a style if I wanted to. Layer, and then I can erase the existing entities and it'll just create one using this style. I can even assign elevations right off the bat, which is really cool. And if you have a 3D polyline with a lot of vertices, you can actually weed out those points in the 2D as well as the 3D. We'll just say erase existing and keep it at zero. Now watch what happens to this feature line when I do so. Notice how it automatically dropped that feature line down to zero. This is something you really need to be aware of as it can cause your surface to be triangulated incorrectly. So again, because these two objects are in the same exact site, they are interacting with each other and they will cause them to talk to each other. So if I take these into the object viewer, you'll again see that it is draping it down to that feature line's elevation. All right, so I don't need these feature lines anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete them. I'll just select them and delete them. So let's go ahead and design our parking lot. So the first thing I wanna do is I have a start here so you can follow along if you'd like to, and I'm gonna create a feature line from scratch. Now, I do happen to have this figure. It's a survey figure that I want to actually come off of. So I have an existing elevation, which is the existing edge of pavement, and we're gonna design this parking lot off of that. Now, because it's coming from the survey database, I cannot copy it, so I can't use it as a feature to actually edit and break apart and join, which is what we're gonna to have to do. So I'm just gonna simply start the feature line command just so I can snap to those different elevations on the figure. We'll click create feature line. And in this case, we wanna create a brand new site. So we'll call this one tourist parking lot. Notice some of the options available as far as 3D geometry and numbering if you were doing parcels, but in this case, you'd more be concerned with this one. And we'll click okay. And then I'll go with the basic feature line and then click okay here. And now I'm prompted to specify a start point. So I'll go ahead and snap there and we'll go with the existing elevation. So I'm just gonna press enter here. And I can just keep going along here because I want to grab a few of the existing elevations. And again, I'll just pick elevation because as I snap, it will grab that 3D value. And we'll just go there across here just to get enough of a 3D feature line and press escape. Now I want to create a feature line that comes from the center of this point here. So I'll go to feature line, create feature line. We'll go with the same exact options, but let's say in this case, we actually want to name this something. So we'll call this one driveway CL for center line. All right. And you can also give it a different style if you want to see a different style and make it look a little different. Click okay. 
and I'll just go ahead and snap right here. Notice how it grabs the elevation. I'll press enter. Now, as far as actually being perpendicular to this, we can just use regular AutoCAD O snapping to simply acquire that point. As long as I have a perpendicular O snap turned on, I can simply come perpendicularly to it, and then I can actually use dynamic input to type in a distance, and it will automatically generate that point for me at that same exact elevation. Now, in this case, I actually want to change the grade into this driveway. So I'm going to just click on grade, or I could type G, and we want a grade of, let's say, negative 4%. So I'll type in negative 4, press Enter, and now there's my feature line. I'll press Escape to exit the command because I'm done with my centerline road. Now what I want to do is I want to actually use the stepped offset tool. Now I could select this feature line and actually draft off of it using the tools that would appear in the contextual tab. But all these tools for feature lines are also available in the modify tab as well. So if you look here, we have edit geometry and here's the stepped offset tool, which is basically using the offset command, but I can actually do things like slope, difference, and so on from the object that I'm offsetting. So I'll go ahead and specify the offset distance of 12, press enter. I wanna pick this object and I'll make sure I type in M for multiple, and then I'll pick the side that I want to go on. And in this case, we want a grade of, let's say negative 2% to create our cross slope. And then we'll pick the other side as well, because I've already entered negative two, I can simply press enter, and now I've got the offset right there. I'll press escape to be done with it. Now let's say, just for the heck of it, I wanna just use the polyline command. I don't feel like going through all the different typing ins and grade changes of using the feature line command. So I'm just gonna start the regular old polyline command, and I'm going to snap over here, and I'm gonna acquire this point, and simply go perpendicular like this, and I'm gonna use just dynamic input to go ahead and define my parking lot, right? So let's say for this one here, we want this to be 100 feet. And then I'll acquire this point here. And again, I'll just simply go perpendicular like this. And we'll type, let's say, 150 feet. And again, I'll acquire this point, go this way, we'll do 150 feet. And I'll acquire this one and this one. And I can grab the intersection of those two points. Now I'm not going to close this. I'm gonna actually snap to this point here. Yes, I know it's a 2D polyline and we will change this eventually to the correct elevation. I'll press enter. Now I can also do a 3D polyline. So let's go ahead and draw a 3D polyline for in between here because we're gonna eventually need to create a break line so that we get some nice triangulation. So I'll type in 3P for 3D polyline. And in this case, I wanna just snap to these points here and it'll automatically grab the elevations. And there's our parking lot so far. Now let's go ahead and create feature lines from objects. So we'll go to the feature line and then create feature lines from objects. And we'll go ahead and select this one here and we'll press enter. And again, I could give it a name, but we'll just leave it as a default. And for this case, maybe we'll call this one grading daylight because we're gonna use this eventually to daylight out to the existing ground. We'll click okay. Now that's a feature line. Press enter again to repeat the last command and we'll just pick this one here. And for this one, we will just pick a basic feature line style and click OK. Now I've got my parking lot kind of getting outlined really nicely here. So let's go ahead and break this feature line at these two points and still keep this one here so I can get the different break lines I will need to better triangulate the surface. So we'll go ahead and this time, let's go ahead and select the actual feature line. Notice how the contextual tab updates. And I can go in here and select these different options to turn on the edit geometry and edit elevation commands. And in this case, what we wanna do is we want to break our feature line at the different points and keep the middle of this feature line. So we'll click on break and we'll go ahead and select our feature line. And then there's an option for a first point. So I'll go ahead and just click on that and I will snap at the same exact point. I happen to have two feature lines right now. All right, let's do the same thing for this side here. So we'll go ahead and, in this case, we'll just go to the Modify tab, and we'll go ahead and pick the Break Line tool there, and we'll pick our Feature Line, F for First, Point, then Pick, and then Pick, and now I should have three Feature Lines. All right, that way I can use this for better triangulation. If you want to, you can select these. I'll do a Select Similar, and I'll even select this one and bring this into the Object Viewer by simply right-clicking, Object Viewer. 
All right, this way it kind of gives you a nice idea of what's going on. Now we're not too dramatically changed in our slope, so it looks pretty flat, but it does contain some slope differences. This is one of the other reasons I like to keep a 3D view is I can actually see my feature lines getting generated properly. Let's go ahead and look and make sure that this is at the correct elevations. I can select this feature line and go to the elevation editor. And this is a great little interface in the panorama to actually go in and change different slopes or elevations and so on. So if let's say I wanted to grade ahead here, I could go in here and select that point. Notice how it'll actually show you what point you're at. So the triangle over there is updated. And I can select this and I can even say grade ahead by negative two. Press enter. Notice how it'll update all those as well. Again, you can also make sure you change the elevation here. So I'm gonna actually zoom in here and just to make sure I'm on the right elevation, I'll select this one here and I'll hover over this and in the lower left corner, it says 101.1833. So it looks like I'm at the correct elevation there. And that's gonna be the same for the end station as well. If you mess up and you wanna change these all, I'm gonna select all these rows and I can do a constant elevation or grade by simply clicking this one and click OK it'll update all the rows with that same elevation. The grading elevation editor is really a pretty cool tool to use. Now what I want to do is I actually want to grade a slope between points and my drainage is going to be down this way. So I want all the drainage to kind of go over here. So what we'll do is we'll actually grade all the way down from let's say this point here down to there by negative 4% and this point here negative 4% as well. So I will go ahead and pick in the modify tab We'll go to the Edit Elevations panel, and here's a bunch of tools. We're not gonna cover all these in this class, but as you can see, there's a whole mess of nice little tools to go ahead and change your elevations. We'll just pick this one here, which is Set Grade Slope Between Points. I'll pick my feature line. It's asking me, where's the starting point that you want to define grade points? I'll pick here, and it's asking me, is that the elevation you want to begin at? I could change it right now, or just press Enter to say, yep, that's the elevation I want. Then it's allowing me to go all the way and define how many points I want to grade a slope between these points. So this is a really powerful tool. I'll select all those and I'll say I want a grade of, like I said, negative 4%. Press enter and notice how it goes all the way there. Now, as we notice there, that looks a little too steep. So let's go ahead and change that. So what I can do is there's a cool little tool called the Quick Elevation Edit. I'll go ahead and select that. And if I look over here, this actually allows me to just pick that and say, you know what, let's make this actually negative two. Press enter. Go over here, point this way, and say negative two. Press enter. And just like that, I have made changes. I'll even hover over this one, click on that, and say negative two as well. Very simple, really cool tools. Depending on where you select, you can actually even change the elevation from this tool as well. Now that I've graded that, I need to actually join these all together. So I'm gonna select one of these first, and I'll go ahead and pick the join tool to join the different feature lines because I'm gonna use these eventually to degrade to the surface. So I'll go ahead and select my other feature lines that I want to join. And again, this is why we actually broke this right here. So I'll go ahead and select this as my grading object, press enter, and notice how they're all now one entity. Now, of course, we wouldn't normally have square looking boxes, right? So let's go ahead and fillet these. So there's a nice little fillet tool right here. And notice how I can just simply cover over these and it's automatically gonna show me the fillet as based on the radius defined. So let's just type R, enter for the radius. And for this one here, let's do a 20. So I'll pick there for 20, pick there. And let's say for this one here, we want it to be a little bit larger. So we'll just say 40 and we'll pick there. And then this one, of course, if it has no solution, it'll tell you. So that one has no solution. So we'll do a radius of, let's say, 10 for this one. And then for these here, I want a radius of, let's say, 25. Again, if it can't solve it, it'll tell you. So I'll just do a radius of 15. Pick that. We'll change it again to, let's say, 15. There's that. You might have to move your mouse around just to get the radius you want. And there's that. And just like that, I now have updated that automatically. Again, really cool stuff. So let me press escape, but obviously now we have a problem. I need to actually go in here and select this feature line and then just reconnect it. So I'll go ahead and just pick this and snap to that. It'll automatically go to the correct elevation and pick that one and go to that. Now, when I go ahead and triangulate this, I know what's gonna happen. It's only gonna triangulate between these two points. Now that's not a very tight triangulation. That won't give us a really good surface. So let's go ahead and go to the insert elevation point. 
And what I can do for this one is I can actually define a distance that I want to do so or an increment. I'll select increment and I'll say every five feet, I want to add an elevation point. And just like that, I now have elevation points all the way across that object. I'll press escape a few times, select this one and do the same exact thing. Let's make sure we snap to the right point. The elevation will update automatically. And again, what's really cool about having your 3D view here is that you can see what points might cause an issue or if you've done anything that was incorrect. I'll do the same thing here. I'll select this and then I'll go to insert elevation points and we'll say an increment of five feet. And there is our finished feature lines. I'll select a bunch here, right click, select similar. If I miss some, I'll pick another one here and then we'll take it to the object viewer to view our finished feature lines. Again, there are many tools. If you need to raise or lower individual feature lines or a bunch of feature lines, there's a whole bunch of tools like raise and lower or drape to a surface or reference another feature line or elevation to define another feature line's elevation. This concludes this video discussing creating and editing feature lines.